Hi everyone, I'm Jody Barrows with The Square in a Square. Welcome to our live webinar today, Wednesday, March 24th. I'm so glad all of you are here and right before the webinar starts, I get to go online and look where all the people have commented about where they're from. And that is so fun and exciting from Norway to Canada to just down the road here in Texas, California, Pennsylvania, Maine, Germany, New Zealand, um, Australia, people from all over the, the globe are watching and we're so excited to have you here, whether it's live or whether it's on a replay. Now on our Wednesday webinars, we always have new people, so welcome to you no matter where you're from. I believe that every quilter with the right skill and the right knowledge can make most any quilt that they want to make. So we teach the square and a square system, which takes the human element out of the triangle unit. So it sets you up for success. And all of those different triangle units we do with one tool, the square and a square ruler, and we do it with one basic square that looks like this. And of course you can make them any size and any color. And then in the way that you trim them up, you get what we call options. And the options are the different triangle units. So option one is a square and a square. Option three is a flying goose. Option four, half square triangles. Options one through 17 start out like this with a square and strips. And options 18 to 39 start out with a diamond shape in the middle. And in some of our future uh, Wednesday webinars, we're gonna jump into the diamonds. I was just looking at this morning kind of what the rest of our schedule would be for March and for April and doing some planning. So we'll let you know about some of that as time goes along. Now in our Wednesday webinars, you can go back now that you're in, you can, uh, if you're in the, the one that you've signed, because people are watching YouTube, they're watching Facebook, they're watching through the webinars. If you've signed up with your email and you're watching through the actual webinar, then you're signed up and you can go back in and watch the past Wednesday webinars. So in January, we did one every Wednesday. In February, we missed a couple because uh, we had a, a technology problem and then we had the big Texas ice storm that lasted days and electricity out and everything. So we missed a couple of Wednesdays on that. And then in March, on one Wednesday, I think it was the 10th, we didn't do it on Wednesday, we did it on the 12th, uh, which was actually a Friday. So though you can go back in and watch on any of those. And while I'm talking about the past Wednesday webinars, these two quilts right here behind me, this one is the Crazy Nine Patch in the Blue Floral, and that's the one we did last week. So I wanted to show that to you again and remind you to go back and watch that uh, Wednesday webinar. And then this one here is the Union Square. And um, that one, I think the Union Square, the Americana, I think all of those we did on that Friday the 12th one instead of Wednesday the 10th. So make sure you go back in and watch uh, that particular one. Now I'm gonna move them and let you look at this beautiful big quilt hanging behind me. And I'll tell you about it in just a second. So this one is our block of the week. So every Monday, and it's a paid program, if you're interested in learning the, 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 the system and making these blocks and learning it, and with all the teaching that goes along with it, you can go right to our website, squareandasquare.com, and you can sign up for the block of the week. You can use your own stash, so that's great. Or if you wanna make it just like ours, you can go on the website and order the kit to go along with it. And we have been working, uh, this Monday we finished block seven, so this one right down here. So all of those teachings are already in there. You can go in and watch those and, and soak up all the skill and knowledge and make those blocks and learn the system. And then we're gonna start in next week with this one right here, block eight. And we'll go clear, I think, um, I, oh, I looked at the calendar this morning, but I think we'll go clear to the end of April in uh, teaching this one. And then we're going to jump in in that same content, in that same class on Mondays, and we're going to start learning settings. So not only will you learn how to set the quilt together the way that you see it here, but we're going to show you other settings of how to take any blocks of any size and set them together. So that's really cool. And we're going to do some borders to go along with it. So that's kind of a little bit to finish out our March and our April, and then we'll continue to have our Wednesday webinars too um, uh, to the end of April. Then we'll have a little bit different con uh, concept of what we're gonna do uh, and time schedule, and we'll let you know about that when it gets a little closer. So with every webinar, 
um, I always tell you that we have a hotline. It's a texting hotline. So you can text me and I'll see it right here. Instead of the bat phone, it's the red quilt phone. Only your texts go to this phone. And that number is 817-713-2879. So get a pencil and paper. You need to take notes through all of the webinar today and every webinar and start yourself a notebook so that you know, okay, I need to go back to March the 12th where she taught and she talked about that then you'll know what that is because we have so much teaching going on lots of times the emails and um, questions and requests want me to teach something I've already taught if it's been a while since I've taught it it's good to teach it again but if it's something that I've recently taught then you can just go back to one of those more current webinars and watch also check out the YouTube and the Facebook for past um, uh, teachings so that number again is 817-713-2879 so I'll check on this during the webinar today and you can text on here anytime any day of the week and um, as soon as I can I I check them uh, and uh, get right back to you if you have any questions or need help. We also have the um, email, which is steve at squareinasquare.com. And we kind of like to save the emails for when you have questions about uh, something that has to do with the technology or some of the video teachings or about an order or something like that. If you have questions about a quilt or a size or something, um, maybe send it on this text line and we can get to it a little bit quicker and it kind of helps separate those so that we can help in a, in a better way. So um, I wanted to, um, I love to uh, read different things that people have emailed and text me. And this one I thought was probably, a, it's a little short uh, quilt story, but I think it probably um, either has a lot of you probably have this same idea or same story. She says, it took me quite a while to find Jody Barrows. While I have enjoyed my quilting journey up to this point, I have been inspired with the ultimate possibilities that Jody has shown me to make those beautiful quilts that seemed hard to accomplish and even impossible. I have uh, accomplished and perfected so much in such a short time just in the last little bit of learning about Jody Barrows, her square to square, and how she teaches the science of patchwork. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to get right in and started on that. Now, I always tell people, anytime you have questions, um, send them to me, and we can, if it's something that's good to demo, I'll do it here on the Wednesday webinars. So we're going to go over... Um, a little bit of the beginning options. Option one is square and a square. So just a square and a square is option one. Option three is flying geese. And option four is half square triangles. And those are the three main options that you use in the quilt world. And they are the three main teachings of the square and a square system, options one through 17, which are the square options. So what that means is, is that once you learn and understand the concept of how we trim those three different options, those three different triangle units, then you're gonna take that information and apply it to the other options. So even though we have 17 options that are a part of the square options, it's not like you have to learn 17 different trimmings to get different triangle units. They all start out with the square in the middle, strips on the side, and of course you can make those any size and shape. And we're gonna talk about sizing and charts and, the, and the, how to use the reference book uh, here in a few minutes. Um, also, not only will we take questions on the hotline, the text number, but also uh, those of you that are in the email concept of the webinar, you can comment on that page and I'll stop and take questions off of that. Um, not as they come in, but as I get to a point, as a good stopping point, then I'll stop, ask questions, uh, see what the questions are and go from there, okay? So if you ask a question, be patient and let me um, get to a certain point and then we'll look at the at that rolling feed of the actual webinar comments and get right to you okay so there are three let's look down here at the screen and you can do of course any size and any color you can put lights in the middle or darks in the middle you can put darks on the on the what we these are what we call the surround strips or you can do lights and it's just a strip on each side of the square, and that strip has to cover the square. So if your square is four inches, your strip has to be at least four, not more than four and a half. I don't make them perfect on here because then that takes time when I'm sewing 
to put them on and make them uh, perfect. Um, and look how you can put different colors. You can coordinate the colors opposite, make them all scrappy, and you'll see how uh, these all turn out to be the triangle units and how your colors work on that here in a, in a few minutes when we start trimming. Now let's back up just a hair. For those that are brand new, you're like, how do I get this? How do I get the square in the middle strips on this side? We don't do them one at a time. We mass produce them. And let me get my little samples real quick. Okay, so you're going to start your strip in the sewing machine. So face up, sew just a little bit, and then start putting your squares on. I call it loading your strip. And you want just about a finger space in between. The more space you put in between, the more fabric that you're going to trim off. If you put them too close together, then it's too hard to just cut them apart and separate. And you kind of have an extra little lip part hanging off. Let's see if we can get this one flipped over. So if when you look at this one, see how that strip was a little bit bigger than the square. And you don't want more than that on there. It can make it a little bit more difficult to, trim, to speed through your machine. And we don't go back in and trim that up perfect. We just separate them. So after you have side one on, you're going to put another strip in the sewing machine and you would turn it around and sew that strip down the other side. So it's going to look like this. So see how you put your other strip in and then just put this on top. Just lay it on top of that other strip and you don't open them up. Leave them folded together. Just keep them flat and smooth and sew that other strip on. So it's going to look like this. like that. Leave them together as you're sewing, cut them apart, and then you're going to press what we call open. And the reason why we call it open is because your your piece looks like this when you when you separate these and you're going to put them on your table and you're going to iron and then you're going to open it up. Open the strips up and that means the square is flat. And then when you have these done, then you're just going to take a short piece. You can cut them from your, um, your long strips, your fat quarters, your scraps, whatever. And look how you just put, you just start sewing, slap, I call it slap and sew. Slap that little short strip down, sew it on, making sure it's nice and even here with the square. Sew all the way through, start your next one, and just chain feed these through the machine, okay? And then you do the opposite side, press them open, and there you have your basic square. And from that basic square, you can trim this into anything that you want. So the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to talk about trimming, and then we're going to talk about sizing, okay? So the first one, we're going to do option one. And I'm right-handed, so I'm going to cut on the right side. So I've turned it so that the corner is here on the right. I don't want to cut like this. I want to cut like this. And there are actually three of the square to square rulers. Um, you can use any of the three to do what I'm doing today. So this one is the original one. And when you're just getting started, we always recommend that you get started with the original one. And it comes with this great book called the Quick and Easy Book. And they come all plastic wrapped like that together. And that's what we call the original ruler. And we're going to talk a little bit more about this book today. I haven't talked about it in a long time. And you can see on the ruler, here we have the 90, where the set of 90 angles are, and then the ripple lines that come off. This is the, the mini ruler, and it's not just for mini quilts. This will make, um, uh, we've used it a lot in our block of the week up here for our 12-inch block. So you can see these big pieces here. So the mini is just smaller in size, and we say it's for convenience if you're working in a small space. Um, and um, I love the little corner, the four-inch corner square on here. I use it all the time. So if I was going to use the mini, I would come over here to the 90. Move it just a little bit. And I would put the 90 right in the corner and line those... Um, those lines up of the 90 right over the seam, grid line right through the point. If I'm using my original, I do the same thing. I put my 90 right in there. I line my 90 lines up with my seam. My grid line goes right through the point. So you can see how those work the same. 
Now, if I am using our new Grande, which I love the new Grande, I find myself using it and having it on my table almost all the time. It has the 90 right here and they're blue lines and there's only one set of lines on here. So, um, you know, it's easy to um, just know to put that blue line, put that tip of that blue line right in the seam, blue lines over, and you do not have a grid line that goes right smack through the middle on it. So you just kind of eyeball it and make sure it's right smack in the middle. Now what all of these do is they leave a fourth of an inch from that corner square to the edge of your fabric. So let's look here. I don't want any glare off of those is why I cover them up. So let's look here at the trim with the original. Hand flat. If you want to keep part of your hand on your mat or all of it, remember don't cut like a spider. You have to learn on your rulers, any ruler when you're doing rotary cutting, how much pressure or how light. If you put too much pressure, your rulers are going to slip. If you don't put enough on them, they're going to slip. So you need to learn that good, perfect pressure so that your rulers don't slip and move around. So you can see how you're going to get that fourth of an inch off of that point, And that's your seam allowance for the option one. And let's go in and trim. And we're going to do all four corners. Now these are pretty tiny. I'm not going to worry about saving those. But when I have bigger pieces, I do save them. And you can, we're, uh, a lot of our uh, videos when we're actually making quilts, we talk about how to go in and use those. So if I had a small square, um, say like a one and a half or two inch square here in the middle, that would be big enough. It doesn't have to be a strip that you put on the side. You can put one of these little funky triangle units, but the square has to be the correct proportion for that little scrap. Those are pretty little. I wouldn't save those, but these are some larger ones that we've trimmed up, and those will definitely, those would even fit on this size of square here. And then when you go in and trim them up, it's, you know, like kind of cutting off the edges of a pie crust, you trim it up perfect. So you don't have to worry about those edges. So here we go around all four sides. Now, once you start cutting after you make that very first cut, you have to make sure that the outside where you've already cut is staying square, even if your inside lines are not, because the inside is your human element. That's where the human did the cutting, the sewing, and the pressing. So this inside here may not be perfect, but we have to keep the outside square, and we have to keep the seam allowance correct. And that's our option one. And the pattern that we're going to work on today, we're going to use option one. We had a, um, 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 I guess a customer send me a picture of this little quilt right here. And she said, I have this kit. And she said, I want to know if the fabric in the kit, if I have enough fabric to make it as a square in a square quilt. So we're going to go back and talk about this quilt and fabric in a kit that somebody else did that's not a square in a square. And we're going to know if we have enough fabric and how to work with it so that we can still use that um, kit. So here's the option one, and we're going to use that when we come back to that one. Now the next one I want to show you is flying geese. Now for flying geese, we are going to get two flying geese. So let's look at what flying geese look like. So we're going to get two flying geese out of our basic square. And because we're cutting through two opposite corners, we have to create a seam allowance in here where there wasn't one. And we have to move our points so that when we cut it and go back in and sew a fourth and a fourth, that our point will be exactly where it needs to be. So we're going to have to move our point up that seam. So we're going to trim two opposite corners, leaving the fourth, just like we did here on all four corners. On the other two, we're going to do what we call the two-step because, um, and I want, whoops, I had it right. Okay, we're going to do what we call the two-step. So what, what we want to do is we want to take the 90 and put it in the corner, kind of get our bearings and our position where it needs to be, and then we're going to step it over or slide over two lines, one, two. So here's one line, I'm sliding it. Here's the second line, I'm sliding it. And I want it to be nice and sharp, snug, right in the corner of that fabric square. When you go to that um, two-step, you have a new grid line right here that shoots through that corner. Hand flat, 
make your cut. And do that to the opposite side. So there's my 90, and I'm stepping it over two. Now, in this example, I've gone on the left side of the 90 to do it, because I think you can see it better with the fabric, but you can also do it on the right side. It's the same. Step it over two, put it right in the tip, have grid line goes right through. Now where you've already cut, you want to kind of position it so that you stay square. You've got to stay square where you've already cut. So it looks like this at this point. Now we're gonna leave the fourth of an inch on the other two. So just push the 90, snug in that corner, line it up, go through the grid, and then look out here, you've already cut. So you have to look at that fabric under the ruler. Does it look parallel and neat, or does it look crooked? See, that would look crooked. So remember, you have to keep your seam allowances correct and keep it square. If the insides are not lining up perfect, well, that's just your human element showing up. And you know that you need to work on either cutting the square so that it's a better square, more true, or when you sew, you need to make sure that your seams are all the same and consistent in a scant fourth of an inch. So it looks like this, and because I've cut those first, look how if I'm trimming like this, look how I can just slide it down and go right through those sharp corners on my flying geese. So if you want traditional flying geese, see how those all work up together? And remember, if you're doing multiple colors and you want one color on one side and one on the other, remember wherever you leave the fourth of an inch, those two stay together. They don't get cut up. Wherever you do the two-step, those get cut up. So if you want the red all on the left side, then when you do your trim and you leave the fourth of an inch, since those two are going to stay together, you have to make sure that the red is on the left side and then they all work out to be the same. Now, if you're wanting to make a star, look how easy it is to now go in here and make your eight-pointed star. This, the eight-pointed star is what I fell in love with all of those years ago when I first started quilting. And now it's my go-to block. It used to be the block I hated because it was not easy to put those together. Now, this is your Square in a Square reference it's book, volume one. And to me, the ruler with the quick and easy and this one are your, your main go-to items. You're gonna have over 30 quilts and they're gonna be given in multiple block sizes. So you don't have to make it the size that the pattern says. You can go to the end of the pattern and look at all of those different sizes. Now, uh, this one that I wanna show you is making this square but we're gonna put an option one in the middle. You can do a plain square or you can do an option one in the middle. So let's look here and you're gonna have a three inch, a four inch, a five, a six, a seven, eight. And when you turn the page, you have a nine, 10, 11, 12. So you've got every size of star. And up at the top, it says that these fabric amounts are approximately what you need for 12 blocks. So you can get started on um, any size that you want. And then of course, uh, it will have the pattern in detail for the size that um, is shown for that one. So that's your, your option one and your option three in that one that we call Ohio Star. Now we're gonna do half square triangles, our next one, and then we're gonna talk about how to put these together to make some really cool projects. So option one, leave the fourth of an inch on all four. On option three, flying geese, we've learned to leave the fourth of an inch and two-step the other two. So we're gonna put these together like this so that you can remember that we two-step. Now, a lot of times people are like, where did that point, where did that seam allowance go? When you sew a fourth of an inch here and a fourth of an inch here, there's your point right there exactly where it should be. And of course, when you sew a fourth of an inch here, there's your point. That's pretty obvious, you can see it. Okay, now, so you've learned square in the middle, strips on the side, any size, any color, you've learned a fourth of an inch, and you've learned the two-step. Now to do this one, which is option four, half square triangles, we're gonna do the two-step on all four corners because we're going to be getting, we're gonna cut through all of those um, points. So let's look at these half square triangles. 
got one missing here. Let's see if I can find him. Okay, so this is option four half square triangles. So you can see the square in the middle. And of course, that whatever you put in the middle, that is going to wind up on all of the half square triangles because that's what's in the middle. But your strips that you put on the side can all be different colors and you can get different half square triangles. Now also, when you're following a pattern, for example, this uh, quilt kit, um, if they have you know, the squares, you're not going to use more fabric. So when you're thinking about fabric for this one, whatever the squares are what, and whatever fabric they have in here, it's going to be the same. Where you use a little bit more fabric are the strips that you sew around because you have this little bit that you trim off. So um, the, the, the uh, strips in here are the star points. So since it's kind of different colors, there's two ways that you could approach this. You could say, well, I'm just going to use the color for my points until I run out. And if that means I have one less row of stars, then that's how big my quilt will be. Or you can say, I'm going to add two more fat quarters and have two more colors of stars in there. So that's two ways that you can approach making this quilt. Because whatever your surround strips are, that's where you use just a little bit more fabric. And in a king size quilt, um, it wouldn't be more than a yard. So, you know, it's just a little bit. And remember, when you are doing your very beginning of your sewing, how far apart you put here determines how many squares you can get on a strip. And how long you make these pieces that go on the other two sides, you know, that's where you're going to use more fabric. So, um, those are two things to think about when you're thinking about, okay, this is how much fabric I have and this is what I want to make. So now we're going to go in here and trim right up to the tip on all four corners because we're cutting through all four. We trimmed up to the tip here because we were cutting through those two. But now we're going to cut through all four, so we have to do the two-step on all four. So your 90 goes in and then you step it over two. Now I'm going to do the first one with the original ruler, but I want to show you how easy it is to use the grande. Um, I love the grande because, uh, well, it does lots of different things and you can go in and watch a video on all the different things the grande does. But look how you just have one tip, one line coming off of the edge of the ruler. So you're just going to put the blue line on there and snug it right in the tip so that it's going to be nice and sharp. And you have a grid line that goes right through there. And you're going to look here and make sure you're staying square where you've already cut. So to me, the grande is really cool to use when you're doing the two-step. Or making fine geese or half square triangles. Because you can just focus your eye on that one line and put it in there. Okay. So there is what it looks like when you have trimmed nice and sharp. See, it's sharp, not blunted. This one's really sharp. This is good. This one's just a hair bit blunted. And then you just put your ruler on here. And I like to use my grid lines to help me know just how square and true my fabric is. My fabric piece. Don't let it wiggle. Don't let it move. And then you can come back here and here and cut. And there's no grids to draw. There's no dog ears to trim up. Um, you've just got four nice half square triangles. Um, you know, I love sawtooth borders, but man, making all of those triangle units, I did not want to do that. But look now how you can make that beautiful border. Or if you want to do a bear paw, look how, uh, I love the bear paw block when I was first, um, learning to, uh, quilt back 40 years ago now, but Trying to get all those triangle pieces in there was just a nightmare, but now they just become very easy and very simple um, to do. So once you know how to leave a fourth and do the two-step, that's really all there is to it. So let's talk about sizing. Let's go in, of course, if you're following the patterns in the book, and um, let's talk about uh, patterns and pattern adapting for just a minute. Um, sometimes people are like, is there a pattern for that? Well, once you understand the concept and once you have the charts in the reference book, 
you can look at any quilt or any picture or just sit down and use your imagination and use the charts that are in the book and make any block and any size that you want. You don't have to keep buying all these different patterns. To me, what a pattern does is it gives me the idea and helps me remember, I like that block, I like that quilt, I want to do that. And then it also gives you a guideline for fabric amounts, and of course it'll tell you what sizes of squares and strips, it's the recipe that goes from start to finish. But once you understand the concept of the square and a square and you have the reference book, then you can just go through Pinterest and Facebook pages and adapt all those beautiful quilts over to, to the, the concept of the square and a square system. And I love that, I just love that. So let's look down here at our reference book. This is your volume one, and it's the one that's gonna talk about the square, and that's options one through 17. So you're gonna have your options in here of how to do your sewing, your trimming, any information that you need to know about that unit or shape. And then when you get to page 34, you're gonna get into the charts. So um, let's say, um, remember, this has a raw edge on it, so it is a cut size. Remember, there are two sizes. There's the cut size or the raw edge, and it's larger. And then when you sew this into a block, it becomes the sewn size. So anytime you're doing pattern adapting or pattern building, you're gonna need to know the sewn size. So when we look over here at the option one on this chart, the very first column is gonna tell you what the sewn size is that you're looking for. And then the next column is gonna tell you what size to cut, because you wanna know what size do I cut this so that this turns out to be four inches? And what size are my strips? And then your last column are gonna tell you what size to cut the width of your strip. So let's say that you want this to be a uh, six and a half cut, six inch sewn. So it says sewn up at the top, come down here and find your six inch, six inch sewn, that means six and a half with cut edges, and then you just move across on the chart and the middle column will tell you what size to cut the center square. The top of the column tells you what that is and what the size is. And then the last column will tell you what size to cut your strips. Okay, so it's just that easy. Then on your option three, your flying geese, once again, this has a raw edge, so it's a cut size. So let's say that this is two and a half, then this would be four and a half cut and that means it would sew down to a two by four in your uh, completed project. So it says, what's the sewn size you're looking for? Come down, find the two by four. That means two and a half by four and a half cut. And then you move to the middle column. It tells you what size of center square. And then the last column tells you what size of strips. And then same thing for the half square triangles. It says, what is the size of half square triangle you're looking for? And up here on this one, you have to notice it says sewn. So if this is a three and a half cut, it's gonna sew down to a three. So pay attention to what it is saying up here at the top. And so come down here and find your three, move across, it's gonna tell you what size of center square and strips. Now as you go through the charts, because so many times you're going to be putting an option one and a flying goose together and you want those to be the same size, so if you have to look at option one and option three, you know, that's two charts you have to look at. But if you come back here to some of what we call the advanced charts, let's look, and if you have your book on page 38, this one right here talks about if I wanted an option one and an option three to match up and sew together, then the chart works together. It has the option one and three together. And if you stay on that same horizontal line, it's gonna give you the size of square and strips for your option one, and it's gonna give you the size of square and strips for your flying geese. So you could just go right to this chart and just stay on the line, and whatever, whatever it says, those are gonna to fit together. And that's what some of these do. And then, if you want to figure uh, fabrics, oh, this one is a great one. Lots of times people know, okay, I want a pinwheel, so let's, Put a pinwheel down here. A pinwheel is four um, half square triangles coming together and you're like I know that I need a pinwheel that is a cut four and a half and it sews down to four. So if you come over here and in the very middle it says pinwheel. 
what is the pinwheel you're looking for? What is the sewn? So if it's a cut four and a half, sews down to four, I'm gonna find my four inch right here, and then I can work to the left, and it tells me what size to make my basic square. So when I get them cut into this and sewn into a pinwheel, they'll be the size I'm looking for. And then of course, if it, I wanna put a solid square next to it, then it tells me what size my solid square is, which uh, is, should be pretty obvious to most, but to beginners it may not be. You may also think you can use this solid square to help you get where you need to be with the pinwheel. You can say, okay, I have a five inch cut charm square, and I wanna put a pinwheel next to my five inch cut charm square. So if I come in here to the square, just the plain square, and I find my cut size, which my charm is five inches, then I know that that charm is gonna sew down to four and a half, and if I just keep going to the left, it's gonna tell me what size of square and strips to make this, so that when I get it sewn into this, it matches up to my five inch cut charm. So these are great charts to go in, and I always say they get you to the sewing machine faster. Now, if you, um, all of this pattern adapting is right here, basically just on one page, page 43, it tells you the steps to go through, how to look at a pattern, and how to um, adapt it over to the square and a square. I'm sorry, it's two pages, 43 and 44. Then we come in here and we talk about different measurements. How many, since you need to know, since most everything starts out with a square in the middle, and if you're cutting four inch squares, and if you're gonna cut a strip four inches and then cut your four inch squares out of it, how much can I get out of a strip of fabric? Well, it says if you're cutting a four inch strip or four inch squares, you're gonna get 10 of these out of a strip of fabric. So if I need 40 of these squares, then that means I need four strips and those strips are four inches, that's 16 inches. That means I need a half a yard of this fabric that's gonna be my center square. So this right here is a very important chart that I use a lot when I'm um, figuring fabric for different pattern designs I'm making. But right here actually goes into um, how to figure the strip sizes and um, how to know how much strips I need. So if you needed to know in detail if the fabric I had in this kit for my strips, how much fabric I have, you can do that. You know, it's not hard to do. If you've made it through fourth grade math, then you can figure that strip size and know how much fabric you need if you're making 40 of these. And you can look in your kit and say, well, they gave me three yards and I need three and a half. So then, you know, two more fat quarters is what you need to make it that size. But you can always make it, you know, smaller. Use the fabric that's in the kit and just don't make it as big. And so that's how we, we do it. Um, when you were looking at others. And then of course you get into your patterns and your designs. Now the other thing is, is that we have what we call the option overview book. And if you're in the premium club, then these pages are going to be um, in your uh, premium club where you can print them. If you're not, you can download them. You have to purchase them and you can download them and you can work on your option book. You can snoop around on Facebook uh, if you're not a premium club member and look for, I think it was the summer of 18, we went through and we worked on our option overview book. So you can go to the Facebook page and go back there. It would say summer class number one, and then it would tell you what we were teaching. And then summer class number two. We're not making a quilt or a project. We're working on learning the options and making the book. And that really is the best place to start is to learn the options, then jump in and um, make a quilt. Now, one of the best ones to do is here in the quick and easy book, there's one called Constellations, and I think it's right smack here in the middle. Yep, it is. So this is a very old constellation um, here. It's even got some, um, some sun damage on it. Um, somewhere where I had it one time, it must have gotten some sun. So here you can see, let's look at this. So when you look at it, you see a star. So let me get my little strips here. So when you learn the square and the square system, you're gonna to learn to start looking at quilts differently. So here is uh, the star with the red points. And then here is the star with the blue points. And you might think, okay, I'm gonna make three little stars and put them together. 
But if you're going to make the stars connect, that is not the easiest way to do that because see, you're going to have a seam right here and you're going to be making a lot of flying geese. When if you just make it in rows, if you do it in rows, look how you're going to have a plain square and an option one, a plain square, an option one, a plain square, and then you treat these as flying geese on the outside edge, but you won't do that for a while. You're just going to concentrate on plain squares and option ones. And you can make these any size. And actually, for this little quilt right here that the lady sent in that she has the quilt kit, that's what this is. This is just a plain square of color, so one of her pretty colors. And then she's going to make an option one, and she's going to do um, um, a color on the side. So if this is a green square here, she's going to do green strips here. And then if she wants a purple one next to it, she's going to do purple here and you're just going to go uh, throughout. And as long as you put two colors that match on the side and you have at least four squares with that color, you're going to be just fine with your, with your colors. And so I don't know what size these stars are, but you can make them any size that you want. And I would do them plain square, option one, plain square, option one. And then I would go in and make, actually this would be like a border, you're going to put your last row. Um, you would do your flying geese with a rectangle and then a plain square and then other color and so on. And that would just be your border that you sew around on the outside edge. And when you get it on, then your star actually pops out. And because we didn't do a seam here for flying geese, think about it. Every seam represents three human elements because you have a cutting, a sewing and a pressing. So if we have 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, 21, 24, 27, 30, 33, 36. So by making it with option ones, we removed 36 human elements. That's a nice way of saying you had 30, 30 whatever opportunities to screw that up. But by doing this as an option one, you're setting yourself up for success by looking at the quilt differently and putting it together using the option. So I hope that that has been an eye opener and um, a really big turning concept for a lot of you. And so in the uh, book, it's the little one like I, I've shown, but with the reference book, you can go in and use the charts and make it any color. I want you to notice how you can make, um, like on this one, we made all the centers blue and all the points red. So that was really easy to do because the color concept was not difficult. And then in this one, we did it scrappy. All of the centers were scrappy, different colors, and the points for the option ones and the flying geese were all scrappy, so it didn't matter where it went. So these two were very easy um, color concepts to do. And there's, um, in the uh, quick and easy book, there's five of the options, there's 21 blocks, and there are six completed patterns. So let's look at this one right here and let's actually draw it out and let's see how we're doing. And I'm going to be ready to look for questions here in just a minute. So if you have a question, um, go ahead and type it in on the, the um, screen there if you're watching through email. Or the Facebook ones have to come um, later because I have to go back. Okay, one of the questions says, can you show the book that has the calculation? So we did that. So if that's not enough answer for you on that one, let me know. Um, this one says, my kit has a beginning square of 8.75. So my strips would be, um, for, will that be able to trim? Okay, so uh, if you want to know your strip sizes, look at the chart. But also if you go to option one where we start at the very beginning, it's going to, uh, this little magic math equation down here helps you with a strip. So her center square is, um, is very large. So it's eight and three fourths. So I'm just going to up it to nine because that, st that strip width is an estimate anyway. So if it's nine inches, you divide it in half. So that's four and a half. And you would need to add at least a half five. So those strips would need to be at least uh, five inches. Um, so at least five inches on that strip. Okay, so I think that's all of those, and I'll go check the computer here in a minute. But do we have any questions, Steve? 
Let me go check. So sometimes one of the questions is, what if the size of flying geese, half square triangles that I need is not on the chart? Well, then you go back to the option. So let's go back. She was talking about half square triangles. So we're going to go to option four in your reference book. And there's a little magic math equation right there. It's, um, it's, uh, it's just fourth grade. You're going to take a half of something and add something to it. Just make sure that you have the cut and the sewn size is correct and you'll be fine with it. And just work that little equation right here with the magic math for the option four and you'll have the size that you need. If the size you want is larger or smaller than what's on the chart. And if it's a size that you use all the time, then just put it on a little post-it note and stick it right there in your book and then you have it the next time that you need it. Okay, so let's look at this one right here. So this was one that was sent in to me. It's really a beautiful um, quilt, beautiful block. And um, she was like, how do, I, how do I make this to um, a square and a square? And when I look at it, it's really easy and it's just what we've done today. So I'm gonna come down here and draw the units out. So here is an option one. You see the option one and it's in there four times. So let's put the option one and it's going to have four placements okay so there's the option one it's in there four times and then next to the option one is basically just a four patch and it has a little twist of color this one right here is a light when the other three are color. So C for color, that one's a light. These are color, that's gonna be a light. And so all four corners on those little four patches are gonna be like that. And see, that's gonna leave that corner light so that that star in the middle really shows up. And of course, I would use the four patch tool to make my four patches so they'd be perfect and if you go back and look at the crazy nine patch video last week you'll see the four patch and nine patch ruler how we used them okay so there we have our corners and our option ones in between in the very center is another four patch but on this one all four patches are color then that just leaves these outside edges. So this one here is a flying goose, and this is a plain rectangle. And a, uh, a flying goose here, and a plain square. So see how these um, flying geese here of color, they're gonna make your your um, the rest of this little outside what I call burr when the the star just keeps expanding <clears throat> so look how easy it is to take a design and adapt it over just with what you've learned today when you have the right knowledge and you have your uh, reference book it's going to make it really easy. So let's see how many. Um, so the first thing I have to do is find out how many even squares go across here. So this is represents one square and these represent two. So this is two, four, six, seven, eight. So there's eight even squares that go across. So if we wanted to do this as an eight inch, we'll just do that because it's easy uh, to do when you guys are just watching like this. Um, whoops, that's going to be eight inch sewn and that's going to be an eight and a half cut. And remember, we have to work in the sewn measurement when we do our pattern adapting. So that means that all of these are one inches and that means that these rectangles are going to be one by two inches and the rectangles are the same and that means that these option ones 
are going to be, um, it's, a, it's a two inch, so that's gonna be a two by two. So those would all be pretty small, but the main thing we're wanting to do is get the concept of what we're doing. So, of course, if this is a one inch sewn, it's gonna be a one and a half cut on there. And if this is a one by two sewn, it's gonna be a one and a half by two and a half um, cut. And those are just plain, so those are easy to do at the beginning. Um, on our um, four patches, um, those are going to be one and a half inch cut strips or squares for the four patches. So that just leaves our flying geese and our option one. So let's go to page 34. And you can start right in and use the, um, the option one and the option three, or you can go right over here and check on your, where your option one and three come together that we talked about here on page 38 and let's see if we have um, a flying um, a, okay so option one we have a two inch sewn and so we could just go horizontally right across on that page and um, get our measurements so for our flying geese center um, we're going to do a two and three eighths cut and our strips are one and three eighths cut. And for our option one, this is a two inch, and sometimes the two inch is kind of um, a quirky size. Um, it says to cut a two inch center, but it, it actually could be a skinny two inch, or it could be a fat one and seven eighths inch center square, depending on what we call your personal private measurements, because it's so tiny, it can be just kind of what we call a funky. But make a sample and see if the two inch center works. If not, then go down just a hair. It's gonna depend on actually how perfect you cut this center square. Do you cut it on the outside of the line or the inside of the line? And those seam allowances, you know, are you, do you sew a full, do you sew a scant? And so test out with your PPMs, your personal private measurements on this little two inch one, okay? But, um, and then, so that's a, a two inch center and then your strips are one and a fourth. So that's, bam, that's how easy it is to make this uh, beautiful little block and turn it into a square in a square. So do we have um, some more questions, Steve? A couple. A couple? Okay, let me go see. All right, so two great questions. One is, when you're doing the two-step on the flying geese or the half square triangles or any time that you're doing the two-step, what are the other lines for? We talked about how the grande only had the one line on it and how easy it was to do it. Well, for those of you that are brand new, you need to remember that I made this ruler over 30 years ago. And when I made the ruler, I had seven options, seven different triangle units. And over the 30 years, we've gone all the way up to option 40 now, and you've been able to use the same tool. So those lines are on there. So as we add more options, your same ruler works. I'm not about selling you all kinds of different rulers to make different shapes or to even make different sizes. I want you to have one tool and one concept and be able to use that for the duration of square and square, however long that is. And so those lines are on there for new options that are not out yet. So that's an excellent question. I haven't gotten that question in quite some time. And then the other one is when you're doing this constellation, could you instead of doing a um, instead of doing a half square I mean instead of doing a flying goose option three with a solid rectangle could you do it as an option one well you certainly could but if you do it as an option one you're going to have more cutting more seams 
more strips, more little pieces that you trim off. And so it's really best to do it as a solid unit. That's gonna be the best way to, um, to remove the human element and make it just as simple and easy um, as you can. So I think that's pretty much all of the questions and everything. Let's see, is the quick and easy book the one that comes with the original ruler? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I think that's pretty much it today. I hope you've enjoyed the teachings and make sure you tell your friends about Square and a Square. Go back and watch all the other Wednesday webinars. And uh, anytime you have any questions, let us know. We'll talk to you soon. Thanks for joining.